I'm back home now, but I don't have that much to show you. However, there has been this project I've been working on for like four or five days. So I think I'll just tell you about that. So there's this game called Heroes of the Storm. It's a MOBA and this professional player of Heroes of the Storm named Adrian contacted me through my email and we've been going back and forth on Skype discussing how I can turn my neural network into a way to determine who will win a Heroes of the Storm game based on the hero picks of both teams, the map, and the average MMR of each team. So let me just show you what that's like. First of all, I'm recording on my phone because this laptop tablet thing is not very powerful. So if I were to try running the neural network and a uh, recording software, it would be very slow. Um, I could transport everything over to my desk desktop computer here, but that's a hassle and I thought this was just easier. Anyway, the program is called Heroes of the Storm Predictor. Um, and if you click run, by the way, this is all on GitHub now, so I'll link that in the description as well. So you have the inputs here, which, okay, the ones you see here are the average hero stats for each team, as well as some inputs here, which I'll show you what those mean. If I press two, that'll do training on one example of the data. So this is taking data from around a quarter of a million hero league games that actually happened in the month of October. By the way, this isn't running on the newest patch, so it's kind of out of date, but I'll fix that later. Anyway, you can see the map that was in the game that's chosen for iteration 67 million or something was Cursed Hollow, and the blue team gets to pick five heroes to play as. Okay, I don't know much about this game, so I don't know how to pronounce these, but you can see who they are. And then the red team also gets five picks. And based on those, those are also fed into the input. Based on those, it feeds it to the middle layer. Now, um, Adrian wanted to go real extreme with this, so there, so there are 1,000 nodes in the middle layer, which is kind of scary because it might be overfitting. But then after that, it outputs um, who it thinks will win. So it thinks that there's a 99% chance Team Blue will win, and it's correct. So if I just keep pressing 2, it'll keep feeding in new example games that actually happened, and it will continue to try guessing who actually won those games. And at this point, it's at a success rate of 73%, which is actually much better than I thought was even possible because, oh, there's, there's one I got wrong. Because if you think about a typical MOBA game, even if you were to know everything about the starting condition of that game, there's still a lot of random chance that you could never predict. Like, you don't know how, what state of mind the players are in, um, how well they cooperate. That's stuff you, you can just never know. And... I think that would account for more than half of games being unpredictable, but somehow this neural network is getting almost three quarters of the predictions right, you know, guessing which team will win just based on the hero picks, the map, and some other stuff. About overfitting, the fact that there are 1,000 nodes and the training data is only a quarter of a million games means there's a good chance that it's just memorizing exactly the blueprint here and remembering what it should output for that, which is not good because it's not generalizing, and if I were to feed it a completely new input set, it would not do very well. Now, I should like have a separate training data and testing data, but I don't, so that's another thing I have to do in the future. But here's what you can also do. You can actually click around here and change some stuff up to see what what will change to the output. As I'm clicking here, the output, oh, get rid of the glare, is changing as well. Okay, that's weird. Red has like 20 heroes, but Team Blue, it still thinks Team Blue will win. Of course, since um, this neural network is not trained on data with tons and tons of heroes like this, it's not going to predict very accurately. The moral of the story is only use the neural network on the type of data that you've trained it with. Um, you can also... Okay, so this is another actual game that happened. Um, you can also drag these sliders right here for the average MMR of the blue team and the average MMR of the red team. So, okay, I'm gonna slowly increase um, the red slider, and you can see the confidence that Team Red will win is increasing. And if I bring it back down, it'll decrease. Even when red is at zero, this is at 97, 95, I don't know. And then the same thing will happen with blue, hopefully. So as, I, as blue gets stronger, the chance that red wins goes down, and then as blue gets weaker, the chance that red wins goes up. Here's the coolest feature. This is what actually makes it useful. So you can input anything you want, but you can also press six or seven to clear any color's heroes. So let's say I'm team blue right now, and those aren't the heroes. I haven't picked heroes yet, so I press six to clear it. And then if you press eight, it'll fill out the blues team with the best possible blue heroes to 
have the maximum chance of winning. So if I press 8, boop, there we go. Those are five heroes that you should pick to give yourself a 99% chance of winning. So there we go. Now, like I said with the overfitting problem, there's a very good chance that if you even if you have these blue heroes, you don't really have a 99% chance of winning. It's just making memorizations that aren't actually true. Still, I think it's cool that it can give you a suggestion that could maybe help. And then I could do the same thing with red. So I'm going to clear out red by pressing 6 and then... Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, okay. Okay, clear out red by pressing 7 and then bring in the best red heroes by pressing 9. So those are the best red heroes to counteract that. And now red has an 81% chance of winning. So what it does to pick the best team of 5 is, well, you might expect there are 61 choose 5 possible teams, right? That number is in the millions or billions. It's a, it's a huge number, and I don't think a computer has the processing power to test all of those in a reasonable amount of time. On the other end of the spectrum, the super easy yet naive approach would be to individually test each one, see what the outcome is um, after changing each one, and then choose the 5 heroes that score the highest. However, there are different hero types, and you can imagine if the, the five strongest individual heroes were all of one type, and it selected those five to be on the team, that could create a very lopsided team that doesn't have any healers, or it doesn't have any... I don't know what other types there are. But you want a more well-rounded team. So what it does is it tests each individual hero, sees how well it does, chooses the absolute best one hero, puts that on the team, then runs through again, testing them all again and seeing which one does the best given that the first hero is already on the team. So like the second hero chosen needs to work well with the first. And it repeats that five times so that you get a team of five. So that the fifth hero is chosen to be the best hero that can work with the other four. Ho like that's still not perfect. Like if you really want the best team of fi five, you have to do the 61 choose five. Um, brute force approach, but this gets me a lot closer in a reasonable amount of time, so it's good enough for me. Now, it actually took a long time to get to an accuracy of 73%. You can see that it's been training for 67 million iterations, and that's actually thanks to Adrian, because he's a stronger computer than I do, so he actually ran a lot for a long time. And I added this new feature where you can save the file, you can save the weights of the synapses which define the network into a file by pressing 5 or something, and then he could send that file to me, and then I would have exactly the same network to run on my side to prove that it was working. But if I press 1 now, which will have it train as fast as possible... Come on... You can see, it's doing 2,000 trains per frame. But remember, every single um, train, it has to calculate for all 1,000 middle neurons, which is a ton. So it's going really slow. I think if I wanted to make a more level-headed neural network, Maybe a hundred middle nodes would be better, but with a, a neural network of that size, the accuracy was only around 57 or 58 percent. Though I think that one is definitely not overfitting, which means that it's actually learning real stuff. And besides, based on all the randomness of games, I think 57 or 58 percent is still quite impressive, since it's giving you like that slight edge against everyone else when it comes to like who you think is going to win the game. I'm going to end the video now, but one last thing I want to mention is that I got TensorFlow working on my computer, and to test it out, I programmed a convolutional neural network that can discern between these four textures. So to all the people who say I shouldn't reinvent the wheel by programming all these neural networks from scratch, well, now I'm not doing that anymore. Now I'm using an actual machine learning library.